going to tell you one thing and it applies to every project you will ever act in and direct. What appealed to me most about Princess Buttercup was that you were going to find a Prince Charming, right? And then you live together and you're happily ever after. And it was truly about true love. And when I say you are a coward, that is only because you are the slimiest weakling ever to crawl the earth. The most challenging <laughs> situation, I think, on the set of Princess Bride was probably the sand pit. I remember falling in there thinking, oh, okay, we're gonna drop out of the bottom in a second, right? Because it's all magic movie making. And we had to hold our breath, I think, for about a minute, which felt like 15 minutes. And I was so claustrophobic. I didn't think I was gonna make it. <laughs> <gasps> we were so much of the time out in the middle of nowhere, like shooting up near Sheffield, England, way outside of London. So it was just all of us together every night doing potluck dinners and somebody would play an instrument and we'd start singing or we'd play charades. We were a real tight-knit family on that shoot. We all carry with us how much we all laughed. And Rob Reiner kind of shepherded that movement. I mean, it was one of the greatest experiences of my career, without, without a doubt. Forrest. You don't know what love is. The one challenge about shooting Forrest Gump was I had a two-year-old and then I had just given birth to my son six weeks before we started shooting. I think if I ever was required to do a crying scene in Forrest Gump, it was really easy to find that, that emotion. <laughs> so that was a bit rough, <laughs> meaning not a lot of sleep, to get my point. Forest. We have very different lives, you know. Jenny and Forrest Gump was on the page in the book. Winston Groom did write that complete character to span all of those years and how a young woman grows up. I mean, we really got to see the timeline and that conduit to Forrest that, that never broke. I love her as you do but this is the only way to truly protect her. I think Antiope connected with fans in, in the first Wonder Woman because she is speaking mentorship to her niece. You keep doubting yourself, Diana. No, I don't. Yes, you do. She pushes her to be the strongest she can be. Those are great lessons to have when you're that age. And I think so many young girls Love being reminded of that. You expect a battle to be fair! A battle will never be fair! It was incredible to, to get to do the training for Wonder Woman. We had martial arts training, horse riding, because you had to learn how to gallop on a horse while pulling your arrow out and doing that. <laughs> and then we had weight training every day to build size. And we did that for about a month. A lot of the other Amazons were able to be there two months in advance. And, you know, three quarters of those girls are real athletes. It was a boot camp. It was a form of, of boot camp with all the ladies. It was incredible. I sometimes worry about your imagination, your slavish devotion. You can't think beyond him, not really. Playing Claire Underwood definitely was a milestone in my career. And it was a character that I had never played before. And so much fun to play someone so venal. Um, <laughs> but the opera of her and of the show was like doing a play, which I've never done. And it gave me a lot of gifts. It granted me a lot of opportunities that, that six years on the show. You don't normally make mistakes, do you? But when you do, they are something. Netflix and our production team, you know, just opening up the doors to say, yeah, you should direct. Get in there and have cinema school while I was directing. I was learning while I was doing it because I had this incredible family of support around me. I will forever be grateful for that. So let me be clear. This is the last 
I will ever say on this subject. The one thing that I took from David Fincher as a director, it was something that he shared with me when I started to direct House of Cards. And I was so petrified the night before my first day of directing. And I just said, I, I feel like I need a little nugget of advice or be my mentor for a minute. Tell, give me something because you, you're so experienced. He said, I'm going to tell you one thing and it applies to every project you will ever act in and direct. He said, think of a fraction and it's behavior over time. Things have to mean something to keep the people engaged. Doesn't matter how long you hold on that shot, that take, as long as the behavior is full. So always remember, whatever that behavior is that's going on in that frame, better be engaging. It better be worthwhile, have sustenance. Otherwise, it's on the editing room floor. You ever get lonely out here? Sometimes. I know I'd be more lonely there than here. The reason for choosing this particular movie, Land, to direct first, you know, directorial debut in a feature film, it just resonated because I received the script during the time when our country and other countries were going through hearing the news bi-weekly of these random shooters. And I was thinking about how we all deal with pain and loss in individual ways. You grieve the way you grieve. Can we agree that you not bring any news of life elsewhere? And that's what this movie's about. It's about wanting to erase yourself and start anew because you'll never be able to exist as that person again. Cut, just cut, cut. <laughs>